welcome to Snail Trail 4x4. Today I'm doing a rig walk around with Joe from AZ Westside Wheelers on his 2010 JK. Um, Joe, tell us a little bit about AZ Westside Wheelers before we get into the Jeep. We're a YouTube group. We do uh, Facebook and Instagram. We like to do off-road trail videos. We do some part reviews. Mainly like to stick to the trails. So uh, give us a brief overview of, the, of this amazing custom colored blue Jeep you got. Uh, the 2010, it was a specialty color. You could only get it in a special order. It's a Surf Blue Pearl. It was 2010 only. We haven't really done anything to the motor trans or transfer case. It's okay. just the stock four to one transfer case. Mm -hmm. we, the only thing we've done to the motor is maybe this B&M super cooler help cool the transmission a little. Oh, nice. So besides the engine, the tranny, and the T case that's all stock, almost anything, everything else has been touched. Everything else has pretty much had, had my hands all over it. All right, excellent. Let's go to suspension. What suspension products have you been doing? On right that? now we're running the four and a half inch Synergy with the adjustable control arms. They have mm -hmm. the new dual durometer bushings. They're a bushing that gives you the flex up to 30% like a Johnny joint, but there's no maintenance to them. You don't have right. to grease them you don't have to do any of that stuff they're pretty much maintenance free and they last a really long time cool and then is there any upgrades to the synergy uh, kit that you did i mean is there any we, new... we've added different things to it uh i went with the yeti steer smarts one and a half ton tie rod and drag link flip which was a no drill we didn't have to drill out the knuckle to okay. do the flip so uh what kind of shocks do you have on here we run the falcon 2.1 sports we went with the Sport because they're a little more geared towards the off-road versus the normal version. And the ride has just been incredible between the Synergy dual rate springs and those shocks. This thing rides awesome. The body roll's gone. Nice. It, it really fixed this thing right up. Yeah, I've heard good things about the Falcon shocks. They're so. awesome shocks. They seem they to really be are. really popular on the Jeeps and not really anywhere else. They were originally geared, they built this shock for jeeps they made oh, okay. it specifically for the jk mm -hmm. and then they've started branching out to toyotas and stuff yeah like that. i saw that they just did release a toyota tacoma yeah whole line so i'm kind of interested in that yeah we saw it at sema they're, they're really nice looking yeah cool um is it a short arm or a long arm it kit? is a short arm we went with the short arm because the cost it, it's about a thousand dollars more to do a long arm oh, wow. okay. also you have to cut all of your bracketry off and re-weld all of that stuff and that's just a little out of my wheelhouse at the point got it the axles we have carbon off-road chromoly axle shafts front and rear mm -hmm. we went with the uh, yukon 513 lifetime warranty gears okay nice uh the drivetrain also consists of the adams 1350 drive shafts we went with those because they're they're good up to a 42 inch tire and lots and lots of horsepower nice and then is it the stock e-lockers in front and rear? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're just running the stock e-lockers cool. for now until we okay. have problems with them. Yep. Any uh, additional protection on the axles? Uh, we did go with the Poison Spider diff covers to because we peeled one back on Holcomb Creek. Okay. So, yeah, we, we went with those. Nice. Okay. Um, how about on the knuckles? Are there any upgrades in that area? We had the Synergy Sea Gussets welded on okay. to kind of beef up the knuckles down there. Nice. Rear axle? That's different? No, pretty much the same, same as we just kind of did the same as the front. It's got the poison spider diff cover. Right. Did you paint that. it blue? I did. <laughs> I did. No, my wife did. Okay. <laughs> nice. She painted it. Uh, how about wheels, wheels and tires? Wheels and tires, we're running Federal 37 inch and a 20 inch race line wheel. You can no. off road with the 20s? <sighs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. You just can't You're air down proof, as far. Right? It is. Yeah. Look at our YouTube channel. You can see. You can wheel a twenty. Yeah. You cannot air down as far. I will admit that. You yeah. air down that far, you're gonna lose a beat. But I haven't had so much problem with it so far. What'd you air down to and you started seeing problems? Fifteen with the weight, because I this thing's gotta be over six thousand pounds. So at about 15, I started noticing that the wrinkle got real close to the, the wall of the rim. Okay. And I didn't want to lose it. So 18 is about as low as I tend to go. We upgraded the TerraFlex big rotor kit on here. It's made a huge difference in the way this thing stopped. When we went to the 37 inch tire, I noticed it had a lot less stopping power. Mm -hmm. And when I upgraded just the big rotor kit, no caliper, no none of that, just the rotors, it really stopped a lot faster and coming down big shelves i didn't have any issue with it holding it back oh nice
How about protection? Any additional armor and things along those lots lines? Lots and lots of armor under this. We have a big giant oil pan, oil and transmission skid plate. We added an additional uh, rock hard 4x4 gas tank skid plate. We have an Evo evaporative canister skid plate. Also, we run the rock hard 4x4 control arm lower skid plates because they hang down there real far. So you kind of want protection. I mean, we spent $1,200 on those control arms. I wanted a little bit of protection for them, and they've worked. I've, I've put several scrapes through them. We've done the LOD Signature sh Series Shorty, Smitty Built Winch, which is still unused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still nicely wrapped with all the steel cable in there. You can tell it's unused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. LOD, we did this front little uh, skid plate to protect our sway bar disconnect okay. motor. Is that an option for the front bumper? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, okay. it's an additional option. Right. And then you did that to protect the sway bar? The sway disconnect. bar disconnect yeah. motor. Yeah, it's an electronic motor that hangs right underneath here that you don't really want to hit. It's about a $1,600 replace. Right. Is that an optional part for Rubicons Jeeps? come stock oh, with okay. the sway bar Thanks. disconnect. Yeah. It's electronic. Push button and you're disconnected. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, we have the Smitty Built XRC uh, fenders. We have these sliders right here, and they're just cheap Amazon sliders because we weren't really sure what we wanted to do. The only thing you need to watch for with one of these four-door JKs, it, is, it has three mounting locations. If it doesn't have these three mounting locations, it'll just have one here and one there, and it will buckle, and it will cause more damage than if you actually just left it off. Wow. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I think the more mounting spots you can have, the safer and stronger. And Absolutely. That is. Stay away from any of the ones that only mount to this little pinch seam up under here, because mm -hmm. they will just tear that pinch seam. So bolts. do these go all the way to the frame? They they go right to the body mount bolts. Okay. There's three locations right under there that they mount up really solid. And then these fenders, you just they're just bolt on as well. They are just bolt on. I think you have to drill one or two little holes but nothing real major. They, they went on real super easy and they crushed real super easy too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it did keep you off a rock. It did. It so. did. Metal Masher lived up to its name. <laughs> it did mash metal. <laughs> Any uh, rear bumper additives? Yeah, we added a rear uh, tire carrier bumper in the okay. back. Accessories, besides the front winch, uh, is there anything else that we have going on? How about inside of the cab? We've done a couple little things. We've added some Cover King seat covers to match the interior. We have the WeatherTech floor mats in the front and then the cargo area to protect the carpet a little bit. We also added Drake uh, AC vent rings, which we painted to match the body color. And we have the Drake shift knobs, which the four wheel drive one is also body match color paint. Oh, cool. Um, how about communications? Communications, we run a CB, a Cobra, just the handheld unit, CB. It's, it's, a, a, it's a cool one because it's a handheld and it has all the features on the handheld. Correct, yeah, there's no big control box or yeah. nothing. I have a little tiny uh, plug-in unit where you do the antenna and stuff. That's all mounted under yeah. my glove box. You can hide that away. Box. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool unit. It's tucked away. I, saw, I watched Crawl TV's um, video on it and then I bought one and actually never used it because I've been going more of the ham radio side. Right. But I have it in my shop just sitting there on the on my one of the shelves. And so I saw the same video and did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've noticed that you have some really cool handles on the inside. We do. We have two different styles. We have the hard mount wild boar handles front and rear mm -hmm. and then we just got the Bubba's garage uh, handles in the front that are the paracord. Right. Is there anything else in the rear that was uh, accessories or anything along those lines? We have a high lift jack mount that goes across the roll bar. Okay. It's basically just two little mounts that you screw your high lift jack into and it just you can kind of move that up or down or wherever you want you on can your fit roll bar. It where, however you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you can start out at the bottom of your roll bar mm -hmm. or move all the way up to the top of your roll bar, whichever you, you know, decide to makes it easier for you. Yeah. I found the higher you go, the harder it is to get that high lift jack back in yeah, there. They're not light. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, and then would you have an issue if you lifted it up really high with uh, removing the hard top or putting on the hard top? Uh, you probably can only go a certain height before your high lift's gonna gonna hit, but it's pretty much gonna be at the the cusp of your, the top of your roll cage, so you can pretty put it pretty high. Okay, nice, nice. Um, and then you have a fire extinguisher we, in there we as well. We do run a fire extinguisher. Smart. It's just got a Always. Smitty built mount that just wraps to the roll cage. Excellent. Also, there's a, a mag light mounted back there. Okay. 
great. Thanks for the rig walk around. It's a, an amazing JK. I've seen it wheel uh, for the past few days out here in Moab and it did a phenomenal. Uh, where can people find you and uh, tell people where about you go wheeling and how to? Well, we're down in uh, Kingman, Arizona. It's kind of a small town in between Phoenix and Vegas. We got some really great terrain out there. It goes from desert to the high pines, lots and lots of trails to run. We love doing videos and stuff like that to put on YouTube for everybody to kind of see that Arizona's just not desert. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's not. It really is. You can go from the desert to the high pines in about an hour. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I need to explore much more of that area. So We I've would got love to, to have down. you out. Yeah, love, love to have to. you out. So uh, go check them out on their YouTube channel, AZ Westside Wheelers. Uh, they have some cool trail reviews and some good product upgrades and talking about them on it for the JKs. Uh, thanks for watching. Watch more of the videos up in this corner here or maybe down in the corner because I'll be standing in the corner for our rig walk-arounds. And don't forget, keep crawling.